is college the only way you can be successful in America? For millions of Americans, the answer is yes. And with just a click of a button, a bank is willing to write you a blank check to expand your higher education. But with the rising tuition cost and easy access to student loans, we are nearly in a $1.7 trillion student loan crisis in America. The big question is, can we repay back the $1.7 trillion? And if not, what solutions can we provide to avoid the next financial crisis? Congress tried to expand access to higher education and give everyone a chance to go to college. But these decisions from Congress have been a profit center for both the banks and the universities, allowing millions of Americans to attend the college of their choice. These young and ambitious Americans took out a lot of student debt that they now can't repay. And a lot of these banks and universities made a lot of money off of these non-bankruptable student loans. A financial debt, I must remind you, that has the possibility of staying with you even if you don't graduate from college. The big question is, will the cost of a college degree keep increasing year after year? And the sad truth is, yes. I think one of the reasons why is because students have been handed a blank check, and public and private universities can set the price of a college degree at any marketable cost. So as long as there's that blank check, I think the price for any college degree in America can increase year after year. And for most college students seeking a higher paying career, usually think about attending a graduate school. But is it worth the risk to take on more and more student debt for a higher paying career? I think graduate school can be a huge concern for most college students. Graduate schools are really where you have to take out a big blank check because the students face a limit on how much they can borrow. And some parents can pick up the slack as a co-signer for their children to get a graduate degree, but most parents aren't willing to go that far. In grad school, a graduate student, again, can borrow whatever the school charges. And one of the things that schools are doing right now is they're trying to get more students enrolled in a graduate program, particularly, after this pandemic. So they're coming up with new programs to get students to enroll, and a lot of the times these programs don't always pay off. This is where you end up with over $100,000 in student debt. Students assume it's gonna pay off, and then they find out in some cases that it doesn't. But if you're feeling discouraged to attend a graduate school and to get a higher paying job, you really shouldn't. Instead, if you have the opportunity to go to a graduate school from a graduate program without falling into the student debt trap, I recommend you take a look at this bright young student who took a smarter approach to attending a prestigious university. My name is Jaden Malloy, and I am currently a chemistry major. It is my first year at college. I just started like a couple months ago. And I, uh, before starting, I already have 67 credits. How do, you, how do you have so many credits? Well, in high school, I, I took a, a lot of AP classes. If you want to count them, it's 10. I also took I also took a summer class over here at the U in um, the summer of 2019. And then the semester, my final semester of senior year, I took some college classes directly through a, the high school university program. And also got me some credits too. Why did you take AP classes in high school? Well, the funny thing is, uh, freshman year, I did not take any AP classes at first. Uh, in, in middle school, I wasn't really that keen on academics. I always took like the academic and not honors classes. All my friends were taking the honors classes. I was only ever in honors math. And so when it came to high school, I didn't get into any honors classes. But I guess that would have been fine in middle school, but in high school, I just did not like the academic classes 
and so I decided to try to transfer out um, second quarter uh, October and that's uh, unheard of you're only allowed to transfer classes like two weeks after school starts but mine was well, like eight weeks after so I took some tests and I got into my first AP class AP Hard History and that was just it was so much fun and I just really liked AP classes after that and a lot of people said you were crazy for transferring in but I loved it I preferred it over the academic classes and so afterwards I just started taking the AP classes as many as I could and I loved every one of them mostly there's some that were a little subpar but that's okay what was your GPA in, in high school? Um, I I'm pretty sure it was around a 3.95 cumulative at the end. I only ever got two B pluses. The rest were either A's or A minuses. I only got a few A minuses. Now, did you get any scholarships at your current university? I did. I get. I got the second highest scholarship. I got the Utah flagship scholarship that pays a lot of the tuition. But. Even though I got the scholarship in that, my true passion is with music as well as chemistry. I've enjoyed playing my viola for quite some time now, ever since middle school. And I've just loved it ever since. Now, Jaden, how much debt are you going to have when you graduate from this university? Um, currently, I'm not. I'm actually playing zero to the university. And with the scholarships I have right now, it shouldn't be much at all. And I'm also doing some work study and work in general. So hopefully I graduate uh, with little to none or none at all uh, debt. That's the, that's the main goal and currently I'm doing well with that. What do you plan on doing after you graduate from college? And do you plan on going to grad school? Yeah, I do. Uh, there's a there's a BS MS program where you can do your master's program. Well, you can do a little bit of your master's degree during senior year, and that will let you only have one year extra of master's degree work. And that's my plan right now. With all my credits, I can take college a little easily, and so my senior year, I will only be doing a few of my bachelor level classes and I'll be focusing on the masters. Then after I graduate with my master's degree, I am just planning on going into teaching or if I decide to maybe become a professor. It's safe to say that schools have taken advantage of this hopefulness among students. Some professors have called this a cruel optimism of students where they come in and they think college is the ticket to a really secure, high paying career. And schools have taken advantage of that. The number one question we need to ask ourselves is whether college is worth the explosive cost when selecting a bachelor's or a graduate program, and what students should consider when deciding whether or not to take on all the student debt. One good thing that has happened in recent years is that the Department of Education is putting out more and more data to support which programs do pay off after graduating college. So selecting a college degree can be tough, but it's helpful to know your job security before entering to these college programs that could rack up to hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt. Science, technology, engineering, and math programs seem to be the ticket right now, but not everyone is meant to be into those programs. If you're seeking to discover your passions, talents, and future career, I encourage you to watch this young student's journey in selecting the college of his choice and how it prepared him in the workforce. Oh, nice. Hi, I'm Christian Kelly. I'm 24 years old, and I work at a gym in California. Is this just a job, or is this a career? Oh, where I work at right now is just a job. It is just to pay the bills and especially that student loan debt that I acquired in college. Like right now, I just work at a gym. It's a really good gym in Southern California. 
but it's not what I want to do. And I'm just working here because I got a great opportunity to work there and I like fitness, I like exercising, so I like skateboarding. But right now, I'm just working to pay off that student loan debt. Did uh, college prepare you for your job or your career? Uh, college definitely prepares you for the office life. It definitely prepares you to make sure you can finish tasks at a certain deadline, make sure you know how to submit things, make sure you meet like certain people's expectations and their quotes and like everything like that. But that's all college does. It just prepares you for that. And while it's preparing you for that, you just get a bunch of debt, which is terrible. And because of that huge debt that I acquired, I now have to work my butt off just to pay off all that debt. What college did you go to and what degree did you graduate major in? I went to South Dakota State University, shout out Jack Rabbits, and I was majoring in psychology. I wanted to be a psychologist or a therapist, something to help someone. Like, I wanted to help individuals on a personal level. And then once I realized you need to go to more school for that, like you need a master's degree to do that, and then join a firm or get your own practice and other stuff that is just nonsense, I realized I don't want to do that. That's not what I want to do if I have to go through all that like nonsense for it. So I later just realized, oh, I want to be in HR. I want to be a social worker. So yeah, I can do that with a bachelor's degree. And then I realized that job isn't really secure once you have a bachelor's degree. So what's the point of getting a bachelor's degree and getting all the student loan debt if you're not gonna 100% get the job? Like you might as well go to a trade school like ITV Tech or something like that. Like it's, no one tells you these things and you either learn the hard way or you already know because someone told you or you did the research. But if you didn't know that like me, well, you get screwed. And I got screwed with a bunch of student loan debt. I didn't even graduate college. I left with about 60 grand in debt. And that was like my wake up call to no, stop. Dropped out of college, stopped everything, went back to LA and started working here. I left South Dakota, started working in LA, I work 40 hours a week, have side jobs, just to pay off that student loan debt. And I've been doing that for about two years now, and yeah, that debt's, that debt's halfway gone. I'm now looking at like 26,000, and it can be paid off. If everything goes good, like it's been going good right now, I can pay that off in about two years and actually do what I wanna do and start a career in what I wanna do in skateboarding. Like I don't, have to just work at a gym, work at nine to five, make sure I'm doing what I don't want to do. Right now I'm doing what I don't want to do. The only things I like to do is act, film, and skate. And I get paid for that on the side, but I'm working 40 hours a week at another job, which is cool. Like I'm blessed to have this good job, but it's not what I want to do. And because of that student loan debt, I'm trapped. I have to do something to make money. And that's why I dropped out of college, because I knew with a bachelor's degree, I'd be in the same situation, but with more money and less time to pay it off. Any plans after you pay off your student debt? Oh, dude, yes. Okay, first, paying that debt off. That's the first thing. I recommend everyone pay off their student loan debt or find a way to make sure that your monthly payments are low. Like right now, I have it set up because I paid off so much and I've been doing it for a while now and I realized that I gotta do the research. So I went to the bank, talked to people, I outreached and talked to a lot of other people and just found out ways to make sure my interest is low, my monthly payments are low, and I'm on a long year way of paying off my student loans, but I want that done and paid off in two years so then I can go back to school, get a bachelor's degree, and then work for hopefully Girl or Chocolate, the skateboard company, because those companies are freaking awesome. Like, they make the best videos, their team is awesome and they got nothing but love and support and like a lot of love for like just skateboarding and that's the company I would want to work for and I'm trying to work for them now hopefully as a filmer uh, just hopefully just get on that team and other good teams like that and just work for a good company and hopefully the other homies in my life who I skate with will be there with me and we all eat. It's, we no longer struggle, we just eat. And that's good when you and your homies are all living good because you guys all came up together. That's it. That's like the best satisfaction in your heart. Like, like, yeah, dude, honestly, that student loan debt's the only thing stopping everything right now. And 
I know for a fact it's stopping a lot of my other homies and like other people who I don't even know because dude it's like an American tragedy like dude that student loan debt everyone has it most people who go to college get it if you get lucky and get like financial support or scholarships or something like that or you got money like if you come from money then you're good go to college do what you want to do just don't acquire that student loan debt. Think about what you want to do. Don't be like me and be like, oh, I think I want to do this, I think I want to do that. And then you get finessed by the system and then you get a bunch of student loan debt and then you're chained down, you're shackled. You're pretty much their slave, you're the system's slave. Then you have to realize, damn, how do I get out of this? Oh, I gotta work. I gotta be in the system even more. No, that's not it. If I knew what I knew now, I would have never went to college. I probably would have went to like a trade school or like something or did a couple of classes because I'd like to learn. I still like, I love psychology, I love the major, but nah, I wouldn't have got that much debt, no. If I, if I knew what I knew now, nah, I would have not done that. That's too much debt and a waste of time. My name is R. Eric Jenkins. I'm lucky. I always knew what I wanted to do. What I didn't always know is how to get there. The answer, blaze your own path. I was always watching movies. As a young kid, I was drawn to science fiction and mythology, and I started to create my own stories in my mind within these genres. And uh, my, my drive for storytelling and specifically filmmaking continued as I was growing up and soon I learned about filmmakers like Orson Welles and Buster Keaton and these guys were not only directing movies but they were also writing them and acting in them too. This became my ambition. So I knew that George Lucas and Steven Spielberg had gone to film school so I wanted to go too. I figured that it would be a good pipeline that would lead to a solid career within the film industry and that I would eventually be able to direct my own features. I did not want to get into debt though and I couldn't afford it on my own. So I turned to God and a few days later, something amazing happened. I got an excellent scholarship to a really cool film school in Southern California. Thank you, God. So there I was. I was living the dream, going to film school in Southern California, and I had so many formative experiences, and I learned so much and made a lot of great friendships. Life up to that point had been pretty clear cut. You know, in high school, you get the good grades, so you can get the good scholarship, so you can go to the good university and so you can get the good job, you know? What I wish I had known back then that I know now is that I should have been spending my time making myself more marketable. You see, at the time, I felt like short films are pretentious and that short films too often go after shock value rather than just telling a simple good story, you know, rather than having just some simple good substance. And I felt like the ideas that I had were more suited to features. And so I focused my time in film school uh, writing feature scripts and acting in stage plays, you know, bolstering my acting skills and uh, my confidence as an actor. And of course I did make shorts because it was a film school and so, you know, there were classes where that's what you had to do, you had to make shorts. But I didn't focus very well on things that would help me after I graduated because I just didn't know how, I just didn't know how it worked. I hadn't gone through the experience before. And so, once I had graduated, my, my film school degree alone was not enough to make me marketable. In retrospect, my attitude of, well, short films are pretentious and by the time you go through all the work and effort to uh, really plan a short film really well and produce it, 
you might as well have just spent that time making a feature. There might be some grain of truth in that, but ultimately I think that having that attitude did me a disservice because yes, I did have some short films, but I could have had a lot more. I could have had a much stronger portfolio, a much stronger body of work when I graduated than I, than I did. And um, my naive expectation was that the university system would provide me with a pipeline that I would just get sucked up into and that everything would flow along naturally and I would just get a job and start working in the film industry, you know, in the same way that, that I just naturally flowed into getting the scholarship and being able to go to the school in the first place. And it was at this moment that I realized if I want to be a filmmaker, then I have to film make. I have to stop talking about it. I have to stop thinking about it. I have to stop even just like doing drawings and writing about it because that doesn't do you any good ultimately if it's not getting in front of people somehow. You know, if you're not actually making something that people can watch. So this was a very powerful realization and it was very empowering for me because I realized that up to that point, I had been placing all my power into some imaginary external. You have to create your own opportunities because those are ultimately the only ones you have control over. So I was back in Utah at the time and I thought, what are all the assets that I can leverage to make a really cool short film that I myself would want to see. I decided to do a period Western because in Utah, it was the Wild West and the community in Utah is really good at preserving the history of, you know, the 1800s. So I put out a casting call through social media and I was amazed by the fact that once I had the courage to take manageable risks, results flowed in. Within an hour, I had about 30 actors send me their headshots and their resumes and, and cast some really good local talent that uh, acted in this period western project that I, that I wrote, directed, and acted in, just like I'd always wanted to do. And it was, it was very ambitious. It was, a, it was a large scale short film, but it was controllable enough that it didn't get out of hand. So many opportunities came from that because I created my own opportunity, because I finally mustered up enough courage to take action. I was amazed that the results followed and the opportunities came. And I, when they did come, I was prepared for them because I had created my own and taken action. So, to anyone who wants to be a filmmaker and who is considering going to film school, I would caution you. I would not rule it out entirely because only you know your unique situation. Uh, I certainly don't and I can't tell you specifically what to do and what not to do. But based on my own personal experience, I do know that film school can have immense value. You can learn so much. Yes, that is true. But be careful not to put the emphasis on the speculative knowledge that you can gain in the classroom over the experiential knowledge that you'll gain by making your own projects. Recognize that film school is not the only route. Um, especially if you have to go into debt for it. If that is the case, then I would be very wary and I, I, would, uh, I would caution you a lot against, against that. What I would suggest as a possible alternative is rather than take on a lot of debt, 
by going to a film school. You could go to a community college and you could learn a trade. And with this, you could you could get a job with which you could support yourself and have the stability and the financial freedom to then pursue your filmmaking passion. Especially now, there are so many outlets and there are so many ways to, to grow an audience. You know, it's not, it's not like it was um, 20, 30 years ago where, you know, you're running around with a camcorder that uses tape and, uh, you know, how are you going to show it to people? You know, there are so many ways to, to get your projects out there and to get people to see them. And it's okay if they suck. It's okay if your projects aren't very good at first, because they will get better the more you do it. And that's just the nature of it, as it is with anything else. The ultimate takeaway from my personal experience is to do your research if you're considering going to film school figure out which option has the most value for you and will give you the biggest return on investment. And if you do decide to go to film school, and if you can figure out a way to do so without debt or with minimal debt, then have a plan of what's going to happen once you graduate. So then you're not like a baby bird that, that falls out of the nest, fluttering its wings and plops on the ground. Make yourself marketable. Yes, your grades will be important, but they won't be as important as having a website and a body of work. And, you know, it goes along with creating your own opportunities. Don't expect any educational institution to have some kind of pipeline that is just going to hook you up with a great gig. I, it, it, it could happen, but it's always better to rely on the opportunities that you yourself create because that's what you have control over. And if that opportunity, you know, out of a clear blue sky does come, great. You'll be more prepared for it. You'll be more able to take the most advantage of it because you had the courage to create your own opportunities and take manageable risks. So. Ultimately, blaze your own path.